Hi, this is Jeff Spence, your Math 120 instructor for the Community College of Denver, and this is our video lecture over Section 8.5, which covers annuities, methods of savings, and investments. So annuities is like a regularly uh, scheduled savings plan. So the last example that we covered, in, or one of the last examples that we covered in 8.4 of compound interest, was that you wanted to save to have 20000 in five years, and in order to have 20000 in five years with a one-time deposit, you needed to deposit about $14,800, which might not be feasible. So we have these other ways of savings called annuities where you, um, you make a regularly scheduled deposit into an account and the account accrues interest in a compounding fashion. Um, before we get into the objectives of this particular section, I did want to mention that you will... Um, be able, now that we're getting to later part of this section, you will be uh, able to have this formula sheet for your exam and whenever you're doing the homework. Um, this formula sheet will be uploaded to your D2L page and you'll be able to download it and print it and use this as your formula sheet as well as write some notes on there to help you understand which formula that you're going to use when. We covered simple interest in 8.2, no 8.3, excuse me. And we did compound interest in 8.4. So that was the section I just went over. Um, and we covered these formulas. The future amount equals the principal times 1 plus R divided by N to the N times P. Uh, we did this formula as well. When you want to figure out what you need to invest now, this is the example I was just talking about. And then we have the continuous compounding example. Um, a yield formula is given here. This is a shortcut to the process that I did on the last example in 8.4. Um, so... Usually the, the formulas that we're going to be using are mostly in the compound interest section and below. We're not going to be doing so much with simple interest because it's not super applicable. Uh, but the two formulas that we're going to be covering today are these two here. And I'll show you when they give the formula in the PowerPoint how my formula is slightly different than what you see in the PowerPoint or in the book. But we're going to be looking at these two formulas. Okay, So I'll have that available. So we're going to... Um, do these objectives. So let's just take a look at what an annuity is. An annuity is a sequence of equal payments made at equal time periods. The value of an annuity is the sum of all the deposits plus all the interest paid. I guess the main thing here is just to remember that an annuity is a savings plan where you're going to make regularly scheduled deposits that are always the same. And the value of that is the future value, which we're going to label A. So let's say... Um, you're going to be able to deposit 1000 into a savings plan at the end of each year for three years. The interest rate is compounded at 8% per year compounded annually. So it says find the value of the annuity after three years and find the interest. So we're not going to use a formula here. We're just going to break this down to understand what's happening here. So in three years, an interest compounded at the end of the year is pretty simple. So um, what we do is, let's say, the so at the end of one year, um, we make a thousand dollar investment. So the value at the end of one year is one thousand. At the next year, we're going to gain eight percent interest here. So they're doing one plus 0 0.08. So the one is the one thousand that we already have, and plus the eight percent interest, which is a thousand eighty. But so the, so we're going to get eighty. We're going to all right. Let me start all over. So at the end of one year, we have one thousand. The next year, we're going to gain $80 in interest on that $1,000, and then we're going to make another $1,000 deposit. So we have the $1,000 that we started with, plus the $80 interest, plus the $1,000 that we invest for the end of the second year, gives us $2080. Then we're going to get the interest on the $2080, which was the value at the end of two years. 8% of that added on is $224640, plus another $1,000 that we invest at the end of the year. And the value of our annuity in three years was $32,46.40. Not just $3,000, we gained $246 interest and 40 cents interest over those three years. Part B says find the interest. Well, we made three payments of 1000 each, depositing a total of $3,000. So when we do interest here, uh, we actually always have to figure out what our total investment was, which is always whatever we're investing times the number of times we're depositing, investing it. So three payments of a thousand gives us three thousand, and then the difference of the future value, which is thirty-two forty-six forty minus three thousand, gives us the two hundred forty-six dollars and forty-six or forty cents interest. 
Now, then what we're going to want to do is plug this into a formula so that we can maybe figure out a future value after many years. And also, we might have a more than one compounding per year. So that's what that n represents, the number of compoundings per year. Now, the big thing that this formula is missing that you'll see in my formula sheet, let's take a look at the differences between this and what I have in my formula sheet. The first thing, let me try and get out of the slideshow here so I can show this. All right. So if you look at the two formulas, let me try and zoom in on this real quick. Hold on a second. Okay, so I got it zoomed. So if you look at this formula, we're looking at formula number eight. It says the future amount is the regularly scheduled payment times double parenthesis one plus r divided by n to the n times t minus one over r divided by n. If you look at it, here's the formula here and here's their formula. The big thing that I changed is I wrote PMT because PMT to me implies a regularly scheduled payment investment. P that we see above in the formula sheet here where we're using P implies a one-time investment, just one time. So PMT is a regularly scheduled investment. So that's a, a change that I did from the book. And then the other thing is this denominator here better have parentheses uh, in the denominator. So keep that in mind. When I type this into the calculator, I'm going to put a parenthesis around this R divided by N. And that's the main thing. So I just put the PMT in there to make it simpler to understand that you're going to use, say, formula eight when you're making a regularly scheduled payment versus, say, formula number four when you're making a one-time payment. So let's get back to the example. At age 25, you say, to save for retirement, you decide to deposit 200 in an IRA at the end of each month, an interest rate of 7.5% per year compounded monthly. So we're going to make a Here's the thing, we're going to make this $200 payment at the end of each month. So how much will you have for, for the IRA when you retire at age 65? So I think that's 40 years, right? We're asking the period of time would be 40 years. So the amount of time that you'll have in the IRA is at its present value is 40 years. So we're making $200 regularly scheduled payments. The interest rate is 7.5%. We're compounding monthly. And... Um, we're going to plug this all into the formula. Now, they're showing this step by step. Now, notice, if you break this up step by step, you better carry your decimals to at least five or six decimals until the end when you get the exact money. Now, now I don't agree with this, this uh, example that they're rounding this to the nearest dollar. I'm going to show you how I'm going to get the answer to the nearest cent. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to plug this into the, to the calculator here. I'm going to escape out of this and go to my calculator. Okay, I'm going to show you I can do this all in one line. Oh, my calculator froze. Give me one second here. Okay, so I'm going to do 200. Okay, now there's a bracket and a parenthesis, so that's really just a double parenthesis. Times 1 plus 0 0.075 divided by 12. And I'm really just following... The formula here, okay, and the parenthesis there, that's this parenthesis, to the, now remember, these exponents, when you have multiplication in the exponents, you got to put your own parenthesis there. So 12 times 40, okay, that's the exponent, and then minus 1, and then I'm going to put the bracket here, which is the second parenthesis, okay, so this parenthesis is for this one here. Then I'm going to divide by 0.075 divided by 12, put the parenthesis for the denominator, and I'm going to get $604,764.43, which they rounded for some reason to $6,765. $604,765. On my test, I'm going to prefer that this be rounded to the nearest cent. On the homework, they accept this to the nearest dollar. I, I don't totally agree with this, but this is how you can do the formula in one line. It's pretty simple. I know it looks daunting, but it's not that bad if you just practice it a couple times. So if we look at the next slide, it says, um, what about the interest? Okay. So the first one, what's the future value? Find the interest. Now remember, we're not just investing $200 one time. We're investing $200 every month for 40 years. So, 
The total deposits that we're making is 200 times 12 times 40, which is $96,000. We're investing $96,000, but in 40 years it grew to $604,765. So the interest is a little bit more complicated because we always have to do this to total deposit or total paid first and then subtract $508,765 interest. So that's really a, a great way to invest is to make regularly scheduled investments. All right, the second formula, which is this one we'll see on the formula sheet here, number nine, is written this way. And the main thing I just changed was the difference between P and PMT. Here we're trying to find out what we regularly need to, to invest in if we want to have a certain amount in the future. This is very much like we know what we want to have in the future, we just need to know how much we need to invest each time. Just a minute. Sorry about that, I had a little interruption. So the, the big thing here is that um, with my formula, formula number nine, I just said PMT. So that's for our regularly scheduled payment. This is very much like if we wouldn't want to know our how much we need to invest each time. If you remember the last example from 8.4, we used this formula, number five, if we wanted to save 20,000 and we made a one-time investment, turned out to be 14,800. This is if we, we know what we want in the future, but we could make regularly scheduled payments. So let's take a look at this uh, example. So, let me move down. It says you would like to have $20,000 to use a down payment on a home for five years. So this is very similar to the problem from 8.4 that we ended up, ended with, where you had to, in order, if you're going to make a one-time investment, you have to invest 14,800, which you might not have. So let's see if you want to have 20,000 in five years, how much you could deposit each month. Maybe you could budget this out each month. So we're going to use the formula uh, right here. I'm going to show you in the calculator how that works. So we have. 20,000 that we're going to start with or that we want to have uh, in five years. We're going to take that times 0 0.06, which is the interest rate. We're compounding monthly divided by 12. So that's that parenthesis. Now I'm going to divide. Now the denominator has a bracket and a parenthesis. So I'm going to do a double parenthesis there for the bracket and the parenthesis. 1 plus 0 0.06 divided by 12. So I'm ending the parenthesis here for the first one to the, now remember the exponent needs a parenthesis, so 12 times 5, they don't show that in the formula, and then minus 1, and then another parenthesis there. And they're rounding this to the nearest dollar, and uh, I, in my class I prefer that this be rounded to the nearest cent. So in order to have that 20,000 in five years, at 6% interest, you could make monthly payments of $286.66. So the next step is to figure out the interest. Anytime we have a, we use formula eight or nine and we want to figure out the interest, we have to figure out our total deposits. So remember, we're doing monthly payments for five years. So if we take the $287 monthly payment times 12 times five for every month for five years, we'll see that we've deposited $17,220 over those five years. So the interest gain would be the difference between what it grew to, 20,000, uh, and what we deposited, which is 2,780. So the big thing with both of these formulas is the difference between this and what we did in compound interest, section 8.4, is that we're making regularly scheduled payments. That's why I labeled them PMT. You can type these all in one line in the formula like I did, or if you want to round uh, and break it up into steps, just make sure you're going to four or five decimals. Um, and that's pretty much it. Good luck. We'll see you next time.